This is my take on what makes Curita so special in 2020. I, last time I did this was in 2017 and the product has seen a lot of uh, development and improvements into what, what is good, has been made a lot better. One of the first things that people really like about Curita is the ease of setup. Uh, the speed in which it begins to deliver value and basically all you have to do is define to curator what is what are the IP addresses that makes your uh, DMZ so it knows what's in and what's out and with that and with what curator has which are very many rules and more on this uh, later these rules begin to work the minute that you start sending logs into Curator. So all you need to do is point your log sources, whatever they are, into Curator's IP address. And if you are replacing your existing SIEM with Curator, well, just give Curator the IP address of your former SIEM and once those logs begin to hit Curator, these very many rules begin to correlate, begin to things to make things come together and it produces something that, are, that is called in Curator's lingo, offenses. An offense is a short story that has something in common, an IP address, a user ID, a host name. And instead of sending you 300 logs and 6,000 flows and a combination of those, no, no, I'll send you just one offense that contains all that, all that data. And Curator achieves that by virtue of its capability of doing the taxonomy in which every log source, when parsed, is actually separated into different categories of things so no matter what brand you use of an EDR, a firewall, whatever technology it is, uh, for example the firewall deny will be treated as a firewall deny by the rule so you don't have to have a rule for product A, B and C you have a rule for firewall denies and that works with whatever brand name it is and let's actually take a look at some of the logs that Curator can support out of the box I don't want to make this video too long, so I will just scroll uh, through s some of the very many, we call them DSM, Device Support Module in Curator Lingo, in other technologies called a parser. It's something that can make Curator extract the value, the pieces, and understand the meaning of the different type of logs. So very many of them, both on-prem, as well as uh, in the cloud, right? You may say, well, what happens if I have a log source that is my very own? That, that you know, that, do you have a parser for that? And probably the answer is no. But there's something called the DSM editor in Curita that allows you to either modify an existing one or create a brand new one very, very easily. And particularly if it is a one of the modern type, which most likely will be the case, and uh, those support uh, JSON, which is the most popular format, any kind of XML, CEF, the ArcSite uh, type leaf, the QReader type CSV, whatever is that format, it's really a piece of cake. You don't have to do any of those pesky regics to get. A, 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 a custom parser with basically what you're saying is a extract this and assign it to this category extract that and assign it to that other category so those beautiful rules begin to work for you and one thing that customers really like about Curator is the capability of discovering the logs automatically we call it auto discovery in fact, if, we, if I look at my log sources here in my uh, curator system and I sort all my logs by which of them are auto-discovered, we can put any filters, and in here you see that the majority of them are auto-discovered. Uh, some of them, particularly 
those that are in the cloud and especially in these early stages of the cloud some of them you need to provide credentials go and pick them up and so so they cannot be auto discovered because you cannot receive them uh, but um, as as the the cloud evolves and more of a streaming of logs uh, takes place you can actually will be able to actually do auto discovery for them but for today most of the logs in the cloud do not fit into the auto discovery capability so you need to actually uh, go and look for them and by the way that auto discovery works regardless of whether the dsm is out of the box or custom but one of the things that early set curator apart from any other uh, same technology is the capability of processing flows and what is the information that exists in the flows? Well, precisely these, you know, not only source IP port and destination port, but total bytes, protocol, etc. So, for example, if, if somebody is scanning your network, you're not going to get any flows, any logs out of that. But the flows will tell you, well, this IP is scanning, is trying that port, and then that port, then that port. Or this IP is trying this IP, internal IP, and then this another one. Well, that traffic that goes over the network cannot be hidden from Curator, and that's how uh, Curator can uh, detect those type of b bad behavior. Things that are using, for example, encryption on a port that is not 443 or 22. Well, is that bad? Well, maybe, you know, or maybe you have an application that does that, and it's, you need to set an exception on it. But uh, if it's abnormalities, is one of the things that Curator is so good at detecting with standard flows. But we don't stay just with standard flows. We have the capability of looking inside the payload with a component called QNI. And let me give you an example of one of the things that you can see. Because the traditional flows are stuff that goes into the TCP or UDP headers. And but this is you know without touching the payload, but the payload can tell you very many things. Let me show you just one example. I'm here in the offenses page. These are the things that Curator wants me to investigate. And as you see, there are combinations of multitude of logs and flows. And in this particular case, this is actually telling me, you know what? I don't have any logs in here, just pure flows. What are these flows telling me? Well, you're going to see that this flow seems kind of repetitive. They're using port 53. Oh, that's DNS. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to worry about because it's DNS, right? Well, not really, because the bad guys hide into things like uh, DNS protocol. And in this particular case, Curator detected in the payload that the text field that barely anybody you use in doing DNS business. But the bad guys in this particular case, uh, Curator is telling you all, this looks like a botnet using command and control using the text field in the DNS traffic. This is actually getting, it's actually the mothership. Hey, do I have any tasks that you want me to execute? And 100 of those flows went and no action was required. But this denotes that the machine has been actually compromised. You wouldn't be able to determine that that happened by looking at the logs. There will be no logs for that. There will be no standard flows because this is, again, it will look like TCP uh, DNS traffic on port 53. But if you go inside the payload, you can find this and very many other examples. But there is, if there is a downside to having all those fantastic rules in QRadar, uh, is the fact that you can have way too many rules, and here we are seeing more on this later on the MITRE ATT&CK framework, and, and you, you, you have way too many rules, and if you don't have all the definitions right, or you don't have, for example, the network hierarchy defined, so it doesn't know what's in and what's out, uh, or you don't have some of the basic things that you need to have defining curator, like uh, and we'll go more on that on, on the UBA and other aspects later, but you may get some noise. And for that, curator itself has in the use case manager that wrench that is the tuning up. This is logic that will help you immediately to figure out what are your rules that are firing the most. So you can actually take a look at them and, and, and decide 
you know, which are the ones that are firing the most. In my case, these are not false positive. This is the, because I use this demo, this machine to demonstrate the capabilities of Curator, so I launch a bunch of attacks on it. So these things are real. But if you have any one of these that I and, and give you the percentage of, of, of what are they find. So if you go every week and make sure that the most, the noisiest rule, you can tweak it. You can maybe, maybe you need to modify a parameter on it because what we consider too much traffic might not be too much traffic in your case and things like that. And then you will reduce the level of noise and you can bring your, uh, your curator system. Uh, and like that, there are other four tiles that comes with this particular uh, application that helps you in the process of tuning. And that was something that only professional guys uh, used to do, business partners and IBMers do that. Now that logic has been put inside the tool for anyone to use it. So QReader has the capability of correlating all those things and producing offenses, but it's actually a tool that is very much used for performing searches. And it's always been recognized as a, as a great tool for finding what you uh, want to find. The offenses find what you are not looking for. <laughs> it's the stuff that it brings to your attention. But sometimes you are searching for some particular things uh, the, the, and, and then for that uh, you, you can do searches and in QReader uh, and, and I'm going to be talking through this video series of a file that I have in a public link that show you some of the videos in more detail about what I'm sharing here and so and here is that uh, document with everything is uh, put in a catalog for by by the right category and you can click on the specific link and I have a specific s section on searching so this shows you how to perform the, those searches but the way that you present that information uh, in Curator now it's very good looking on a dark mode with the, all these kind of primitives for getting you know uh, fancy looking data and, and it, it's not only for displaying reports, uh, you can actually put input fields, like I exp can specify here, well, give me all the offenses in the last uh, uh, 24 hours. And so it's an input field that can give you the actual uh, data. And you see how the, my, my graph changed for the last 24 hours. That performs a search, and it's been showing it to you in a much uh, better, good-looking way. Another thing that makes Curator very special is a time saver called Advisor for Watson, Advisor with Watson. So what this thing is, is well, when you're looking at a particular offense, you can certainly look at the rules that, that contribute to that offense. You can look at the IP address, for example, if I look here into the events, I see, what, 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 what yeah. Oh, I go into this, uh, uh, this thing and I see an IP address uh, or URL. So I grab these, go to virus total and see whether this is malicious or not. Let me see what else I can find in here. If I see uh, this is uh, my EDR technology, in this particular case, Symantec, but it can be any other. Oh, a hash. So I'm going to grab that hash and go and do paste it in virus total and begin to make map and see who's behind these. And, and well, let me tell you how QReader can save you a lot of time with that. I send this offense to advisor and advisor is telling me, you know, a couple of things. So let me actually take some information out. In gray, what you see is the data that was part of the offense. That was that user ID, those URLs, that, those, those machines, that hash that we saw, all that, all that good stuff in here. And this hash is malicious. And, and anything in here, you can actually click on it and see why it is that is malicious. So this is actually recent data. And you can see, you know, what are the associated file names and what are the threat intelligence uh, data that tells you that this thing is malicious. So in this particular case, is reversing labs. You can have here virus total. You can have the X4. You can have, uh, you know, cloud shared, uh, the, all sort of uh, threat intelligence sources that advisor know. But so, so you know, in one view, who is involved, what's the data in the offense, and what is malicious. Well, but it does better than that. If you go here and bring the blue, the blue is, this is, I like to call it like the Facebook of the bad guys. Who is related to what? Who has two or three degrees of separation uh, between the data that was in the offense and these other things? So for example, this is a, is a threat organization that is related to that particular attack. In this particular case, the reference comes from CrowdStrike. And you can see the details seen there. And you see that this is actually of high concern. 
Uh, well, good. It will take you a while if you were to do that manually yourself. Same thing with all these other things. But besides getting yourself mortified with all this amount of relationship, you can actually click here and add it into curate a table. We call those tables reference set. You can specify the IP addresses, the hash, or the domains, or all of them, and put it into tables in Curator. And by doing so, if anyone in your organization happens to touch any one of those IOCs, bang, you're going to get an offense in Curator that will tell you about it. And it will tell you that it's related to this particular offense. Let me give you an example of that. Let me bring the, the green. And in Curator, besides doing that, goes with all that information about all those IOCs, goes into your system and automatically performs a search on those IOCs and see, has anyone in my organization touched any one of those related IOCs? And you see that in this particular case, yeah, the, this, this, not only this is Desert Falcon, the one that you had, but in, in this particular case, you have Mr. Jory Avery, who actually touched one of those, and he has his own offense that is related to this. So imagine how much time you save by looking at an, an offense you saw, you see is a high priority or low priority, so it's not a false positive. Who's behind it? I prepare myself into the future if somebody keeps uh, trying to do an attack similar to that, and who else was involved in my organization into that? You get that answer in a matter of a few minutes. So I'm going to uh, stop this video here. I'm going to make this a series of videos. I don't like to make them too long, but I, I certainly have quite a bit more to talk about what makes Curator so special.